Hey guys, Roy here with another Legends of Runeterra video, and today I have something a bit different than my usual uh, ratings and stuff like that. Instead I have a theory. A theory of which cards we are getting in set 1 of Targon Call of the Mountain. Now for those of you who don't know, we actually saw a lot of these champions leaked to us early uh, via leaked voice lines in the game files. Now I'll list all of them right here, but if you don't want to be spoiled, I'm just letting you know right now this is your last chance. Beyond here will be spoilers and heavy speculation, so be aware. So to start things off, I'm going to tell you guys about which champions are coming from Targon itself, since it's the new region and everything like that. The first one obviously has already been revealed at this time of recording, which is Tarek. After that we also have Diana, Leona, Aurelian Soul, Soraka, and Zoe. Now for champions coming from outside of the region, we have Lulu, who's already been revealed, coming from Ionia. Then we have Trundle, whose first cards were announced today, coming from Freljord. Then we have Riven, coming from Noxus, Nocturne from Shadow Isles, Shivana from Demacia, Tom Kench from Bilgewater, and lastly, Victor from Piltover and Zaun. Now I'm super excited to see some of these champions being brought to Legends of Runeterra, and I'm sure a lot of you are too, but here's the thing. Not all of them are coming in set one of the expansion. Riot has already stated that only 7 champions will be making it into the initial roster, and then in the following 6 will be split up across 2 separate mini expansions over the next couple months. Now I hear you. What about my favorite champion? Am I going to have to wait 2 months to play as my favorite champion? Which are getting in the initial set? Well have no fear, if you're willing to suspend your disbelief and buy into my crackpot theories, well don't worry, I have figured out the initial 7. So first things first, just working off our initial assumptions. We already know that both Tarek, Lulu, and Trundle are making it into the original seven, which means we only have four slots left to play with. And even out of those four, I actually believe that three of them are going to be Targonian champions. And this is because out of the initial beta regions, each region only had four champions to launch with, which means that Riot sort of already understands this is a great number to sort of flesh out and get the basis for each region's main themes and mechanics. So right off the bat, let's start with which we could really see here. We already have Tarek, which leaves Leona, Diana, Soraka, Zoe, and Aurelian Soul. Now, when I mentioned earlier that most of these characters have already been leaked thanks to voice lines, a lot of them are very suspicious because many of them only have certain interactions with certain characters, despite actually being from the same region or having direct connections with each other. What do I mean by this? Well, let me start with my first called shot, and that is Aurelian Soul. Now, Aurelian Soul is far from a hot take. He's easily one of the most recognizable champions from Targon, but even the trailer for this set itself was keyed to Aurelian Soul's theme. As you can hear, basically a direct match. The preview image was entirely based on constellations of which Aurelian Soul obviously forges himself. However, the point I want to bring to you guys the most here is actually about the voice lines. These voice lines are particularly interesting because Aurelian Soul has a variety of voice lines specifically for the Freljordian cards. Here I'll play you a couple just so you can see what they're for, as well as the title they're from. Told you we'd rock. Bring down the mountain! All planets break! Pull Runeterra apart! Now you'll notice that some of those were actually for relatively unknown Freljord cards, and some were for upcoming Freljord cards, such as Snowslide. So my completely arbitrary number one pick for the Targonian first set is Aurelian Soul, because he's also related to the Freljordian cards that we already know we're getting thanks to Trundle's reveal. Now, I know that's a bit of a leap, I'm sorry, but don't worry, we're about to take an even bigger one, because the next champions I think we're getting, I think we're getting Leona and Diana. Now, I don't think it's any surprise to anyone that these two are probably the most iconic duo for Targon, by far. They were, after all, the two that they decided to go with for the cinematic, and so it seems really insane to me, personally, not to include these two as the sort of forefront for both the Lunari and the Solari tribes that are going to be on Mount Targon. And let's just even ignore the fact that this is a huge chance for them to world build out more of Targon. 
we actually know of one leaked mechanic in the set, and that is a day slash night cycle. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I'm pretty sure we have the two most perfect champions for a day slash night mechanic. Now, as to the very nature of what a day slash night mechanic would be, whether or not the default is day and then there's a night modifier, or rather there are two completely separate times, we don't really know that just yet. But to not include Diana and Leona in a set that explicitly has a day-night cycle seems nearly impossible. Now, finally, what is the last champion? What is the last non-Targonian champion that is going to make it into this set? Well, I think it's Nocturne. Now I know that seems crazy given the fact that his interactions are pretty spread out across all voice lines, and quite frankly, even in base League of Legends, he's sort of a narrative mystery. Why would they prioritize him when he really doesn't even have a proper design yet? He's on the list of being reworked soon, as well as something that a lot of people sort of are confused on. The fact he's also in Shadow Isles of all places, despite having an origin closer in Demacia, seems a little crazy to me as well. However, in his voice lines, he does have one interaction in particular we should care about, and that is an ability that activates at nighttime. Now, this is really important, because on the official website, they actually did an article talking about the decision to split up the set into three different expansions, and the first thing they said was that the first expansion is going to be the largest of them and introduce their new region's major themes. Given that we know that the new mechanic is going to be a day-night cycle, and that only a few champions actually care about that day-night cycle difference, I feel as though that means almost guarantee that Nocturne is going to get in because he's one of the very few who cares about the region's new major theme. The way I see it, he's going to fulfill a similar role to how Maokai was a support for Nautilus, and how Nautilus was really the quote-unquote deep card, whereas Maokai was sort of something that fed into it really well. Now, they also stated that the future expansions, expansions 2 and 3 of Call of the Mountain, will have a mixture of new themes, new mechanics, and evolutions of strategies you encountered in the first expansion. So, I feel as though some of the other champions, which will probably have their own unique and interesting mechanics, they might be something explored a little bit more later on. Perhaps something that's not directly tied to Targon's initial themes, not in the same way that the day-night cycle clearly is. So, if you want my bet for what the first champions are going to be in the first expansions of Call of the Mountain, it's going to be obviously Lulu, Tarek, and Trundle, but they're going to be joined by Leona, Diana, Aurelian Soul, and Nocturne. I have some theories for future sets as well, but unfortunately for right now, I think this is all I can really say with any evidence of proof. One thing I do want to sort of encourage you guys to do is to come up with your own list, figure out what you think is going to come out next, and of course, please check out LOR Voices for more information on some of the leaked voice lines, or if you want to be adventurous, data mine them yourself. In any case though guys, thank you so much for watching the video, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to listen. Now please, if you don't mind, if you like this sort of content or want to help support me, I'd really appreciate you leaving a like and subscribing, and uh, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.